Well, from the face to the feet, we're tackling another frustrating problem people have with their bodies. Melissa hates her wide feet because they prevent her from wearing designer shoes. Even worse, they're incredibly painful to the point she can barely walk. I've had my bunion, I mean, for years now, but the pain started like about two years ago. Well, I feel bad for my wife because anywhere we go, you know, if, she's, if we have to dress up, she has to, you know, wear heels. I know that she's going to pull me aside and say, sweetie, I have to sit down because it hurts so bad. I don't really like my feet because of this. I also have the Taylor's bunion, which is this. And lastly, my long toe. Every time I work out now, after running, my feet are swollen. And that's when I knew that the problem is really bad. Either. Can you massage it? Hurts that bad? Yeah. Ow! Ow, babe. I'm not kidding you. That, that hurts. I love shoes. And, and I'm in the fashion industry. It's just part of me. I have a collection of shoes that I can't even wear on a daily basis because it just kills me. This is one of my favorites, but unfortunately I can't wear it because it's, as you can see, again, high heels and it's very narrow. So I really have to stretch the shoes and push it up like that to cover my bunion. I can't wait to get this fixed. It just really hurts. Coming up, we're heading into the operating room as Melissa has the bones of her feet shaved so she can ease her pain and fit into the sexy shoes she'd love to wear. I told Orton this one's for you. This is a cool instrument. He loves this thing. I'm just making sure that my cut goes all the way through, through the bone. Now our second cut is the most important cut. It's really bad. It looks ugly. This is not supposed to look like this. I have all these pretty shoes. I have all these pretty clothes. But because of my ugly feet, I feel like I'm the ugly stepsister. Help me. How far would you go to fit into your high heel shoes? Would you ever shave the bones of your feet? Melissa did just that in the name of fashion and we scrubbed in for her surgery. I want you all to be warned, it is pretty graphic. Welcome, you excited? It's actually a very typical problem where you have a bunion and you have a tailor's bunion, a bunion on the side. What we're gonna do for you today is narrow the front of the foot, bring this side in, the bunion side by narrowing this medial side. We're going to shift this bone over and we're going to shift this bone over, in essence creating a narrower foot. We're going to make our primary incision guard. We have to dissect around this capsule nice and clean before we can expose the joint. And look how sharp that is. That causes a lot of discomfort. We're going to take the bump off. This is not smoke, it's bone dust. I have to order this one's for you. He loves this thing. I'm just making sure that my cut goes all the way through the bone. Now we're gonna shift this piece over that way, reducing the angle like we showed on the X-ray. Do you see this transfer? It's actually shifted over. This is a very sophisticated fixation system because what this allows the patient to get is this procedure without having to worry about screw irritation. There's no head, completely flat. So this patient won't ever feel a screw. So I'm gonna stitch the capsule up together. I'm gonna grab my needle from here, right? So now look, I took the capsule through the bone. Right? Now I'm gonna take this same needle and I'm gonna go back through the capsule. I'm tacking this down to the bone. We're doing the Taylor's bunion, which is the same thing, but much smaller on the outside of the foot. She lost a good one centimeter of width on this side and another half a centimeter on this side. And in a shoe, that makes a big difference. The procedure's been excellent. The bone is nice and strong. The screw went in perfectly and she's gonna do great. She's gonna love this. Melissa's here just two weeks after her surgery along with her surgeon, Dr. Ali Saadre. Welcome both of you. Thank you. How are you Thank feeling, you. first of all? I'm totally fine. Yeah. I feel good. Just I'm not hurting weeks. at all. Not even two weeks. It's 13 days. This is gonna be two weeks tomorrow. How did it feel right after the surgery? A little sore? A little sore, but I was totally fine. I was able to in. walk out of the office right away. I didn't even have to use crutches. I was, I was totally fine. I didn't have to use the painkillers that he gave me, so. Which is great, but you call this the Cinderella procedure, which I think is a pretty apt name. It is a pretty apt name. It's difficult to wear shoes when you have this widening of the foot, the medial bunion, the lateral bunion. Women have to deal with it. We don't. We talked about this 
often with patients, they come in there, I can't wear my shoes, I'm a professional, how do I go to work? So, you know, it's getting your foot into the shoe comfortably for a whole day. So you were frustrated, you go to the shoe store, there were shoes you liked, but you tried them on and it just didn't work out. Yeah, the certain shoes I can't wear. But on top of that, you had pain in your foot too, didn't you? Mm -hmm. So typically, bunions will do this, won't they? They will, because the joint is malaligned. And so if a joint is malaligned, it's gonna wear the arthritis, the articular cartilage, and eventually to arthritis. So we really need to position it well. The procedure lends itself to early Early intervention. So it's really a preventative procedure. And tell so everyone easy. what a bunion is. Well, a bunion is a shifting away of the first metatarsal away from the second metatarsal. So the angle increases and you see a bump on the inside of the foot. And you have a model to show we us, We have right? a model. This is outside. There's really no bones on this thing, but you can see basically this is a bunion deformity. This is the medial bunion and this is a lateral bunion. So we call this a tailor's bunion. And what we do in the Cinderella procedure is we narrow the foot by removing both of these and bringing the bones inwards, creating a normal foot to where the shoes are being to wear. And in her case, she, you also shortened her second toe, didn't you? We also shortened the second That's toe. That's why her yeah. feet look so good. I mean, you got it this way I and... mean, her foot's still swollen post-op. Uh, this yeah. is only 13 days, and that swelling's gonna go down about four to six weeks, and the foot will be remarkably thinner. She's gonna lose about two sizes in her shoes. Wow. But Melissa, you couldn't just wear a wider shoe? <laughs> that doesn't yeah. work. That looks well, ugly. I mean, this is a pretty That's drastic ugly. procedure. We had everyone in the audience covering their eyes in horror it's while you're awake looking down at your foot it being wasn't shaved that off. Bad. It wasn't that bad. Podiatry does foot surgery, we fix foot problems, and this is something that can cause problems in the future. Mm -hmm. So the benefit of this surgery that I produced is and created is that this patient can get this procedure done early before the joint wears out. So it really reduces the risk postoperatively for the patient. It's under local, it's comfortable, they're ambulatory, mm -hmm. and here she is 13 days. Yeah. We use this device, this is a headless screw, they showed it in the procedure, but mm -hmm. this changes the experience because the patient doesn't have to have the old-fashioned technique, which is a K-wire. This is the old-fashioned technique. This goes through the skin like this, holding the bone in place while it's healing. This takes six weeks, this takes two weeks. And let's look at the x-rays because I think we can see the screw in the before and after x-rays. Absolutely. What you'll see is the original before shows the metatarsals and how they're wide. They're positioned far away from one another. And in the post-op x-ray, this is actually just two weeks post-op, you can see how narrow the foot's gotten from both sides. There's the toe shortening with that little stay fuse that we showed, shortening the toe. And that screw's buried inside the bone. So this patient can actually walk right after the procedure. That was dramatic, narrowing it was impressive. the foot on that x-ray, yeah. And, and even just looking, let's look at her before picture of her foot. And I want to compare that with how Melissa's foot looks right now, which is a truly remarkable change. And, and this is with continued swelling post-operatively. So for all those women out there, so they can hopefully avoid going under the knife, yes. good tips for preventing bunions in the all first place. You know, bunions come from two factors, really. It's the kind of shoes you wear, but also the genetics. You inherit this problem, and the shoes create that genetic predisposition to show itself. So you want to wear good shoes, supportive shoes, with an arch support, but you also don't want to wait too long. A preventative measure is seeing a doctor before it becomes bad. Is it more common in women than men? It is because of their shoes, but I mean, I'd say... It's all about what they wear it's and the wear and tear in the yeah. arch, but yeah. men get it too. Men get it too. It's 30% yeah. of the patients are men. So don't, they don't have to give up their high heels, but they don't definitely try to limit your time in them, yeah. correct? I mean, don't live in high heels. There, there you go. Can't <laughs> take those away. Did you hear that, Dr. Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Bradley. I appreciate you being here.